There are a bunch of different ways to do the Orton effect. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the way that I do it. Let's call it the Nick Page Orton effect. Maybe we can call it the page effect? I don't know. Let's take a look. One of the types of shots that benefits the most from the Orton effect are gonna be shots like this one here where it's a, a forest scene or there's just a lot of foliage in the shot. The reason for that is because if we zoom in here, you can see that we have just lots of small, sharp, fine details. And sometimes it's nice to kind of give it a sense of atmosphere. So the way we're gonna do the updated Orton effect is that first we're gonna create a merge visible layer by going Control Shift Alt E or Command Option Shift E. That's gonna give us this layer here which is going to give us pixels to play with because we're gonna to need to blur those pixels. The next step is we're gonna go up to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. And we're gonna blur this to taste. Typically, I like to go around the same pixel radius as the number of megapixels in my camera. I shot this on a Sony a7R IV. So let's take this all the way up into the 50s. We're just wanting to blur enough to where we're losing the small details, but we're still maintaining the overall shapes of all the objects in the shot. We're gonna hit OK. And now we're going to decrease the opacity of this layer. So I'm gonna decrease the opacity of this so we're seeing just a little bit of the effect but not the whole thing. I'm just gonna lower this down to 12%. The reason I choose 12% is because that's just where my fingers happen to fall on the keyboard. Anywhere in the 10 to 15% opacity range is fine. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to restrict this to only go into the highlights of the shot. We don't want our shadows to glow, only highlights glow. So we're gonna use a luminosity mask to restrict this effect, this whole layer, into the highlights of the shot. So I'm gonna go up to Lumenzia, you could just as easily use TK Actions or Raya Pro or just go over into your channels tab. But I'm gonna use Lumenzia in this case and I'm just gonna create a lights one that's gonna give me this luminosity mask here. And then I'm gonna select mask, which is going to apply that luminosity mask to this layer. So we now have that blurred layer with the opacity turned down and we've applied a luminosity mask to restrict that blurred layer only into the shadows. So we can start to crank up the opacity of this layer so we can get a feel for what it's doing. I'm gonna go up to 25% for the sake of this video so you can actually tell what it's doing. If I turn this off and on, you can see that we're softening the details but one of the bad things that we're doing is we're blurring the shadows into the highlights, thus kind of darkening the highlights and give it and just kind of, it's losing its, its uh, brilliance. It's losing its highlight edge. So the next thing that I'm gonna do, and this is actually different than I've shown in the past, is that we're going to open this blurred layer up in Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm just gonna go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter is gonna open up that blurred layer here. So the cool thing about opening this up in Adobe Camera Raw is that we have all of the different things that Adobe Camera Raw can do available to us on this layer. So if you think about it, this is only gonna go into our highlights and it's going to be used in a very subtle amount, you know, 20% opacity or whatever. So the first thing that we wanna do is we're gonna add some contrast and we're gonna bring up the exposure of this. And knowing that this is only gonna go into our highlights, we can also add a little bit of warmth with a temperature and tint slider, and we could even add some vibrance into the shot. This is going to not only make those highlights glow a little bit, but it's gonna make them glow with a little bit of warmth. We can go even more extreme in this case, because remember, we're only going to be using a little bit of this effect because of the lower opacity. I'm gonna hit okay. And now if I turn this Orton effect layer off and on, before, after, before, after, this is a higher opacity level than I would normally even use this at, but I want you guys to be able to get the feel of what this is doing. So if we go before, you can see it's a cooler color temperature. And then when I turn it on, not only are those highlights starting to glow a little bit, but they're glowing with warmth. And it's just a really nice kind of last effect that you can give a shot. Let's take a look at another shot. So this shot here can definitely benefit from a little bit of that glowy feel. We have this kind of bright light source that 
honestly, I blew some of my highlights in this area. So if we kind of add a little bit of glow around that area, it's going to make it slightly less noticeable that, you know, Nick screwed up. So let's do the same thing. Let's create a merge visible air, control shift alt E or command option shift E on a Mac. That gives us our merge visible air here. So we have pixels to play with. And now we're gonna go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. This is actually back in my Canon 5D Mark IV days. So let's decrease the pixel radius a bit. Let's try a pixel radius of about 30. And now I'm gonna decrease the opacity of this layer down to 12%. Now we're gonna put a luminosity mask on this layer to restrict it only, only into the highlights. So I'm gonna create a lights one, hit mask. Let's increase the opacity of this layer up to 25%. Now let's open it up into Adobe Camera Raw. We're gonna go filter, camera raw filter. And now we're going to add a bunch of contrast, increase the exposure a bit, add some saturation and vibrance, and then warm it up so those highlights are going to take on a bit of extra warmth and we'll hit okay. And so now when I turn this off and on, before, after, before, after this is the kind of thing that you can dial in to taste. So I know that there's gonna be a bunch of people that say, well, actually I wouldn't ever use this effect. The Orton effect is just an overused Instagram trick. Oh, it just looks so overdone and so cartoony. And to those people I say, you don't have to use a whole bunch of this effect. Just use a little bit, or maybe just mask it in just around the, the background of the shot or around your light source. It really helps kind of mellow out some of that high, those high contrast, sharp areas. You're still maintaining sharpness, but you're adding just a little bit of atmosphere and glow. And it can be a nice kind of finishing touch to an image. Hopefully this helps. If you guys like these post-processing videos, please like and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy, everybody.